Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Increasing School Breakfast Participation Results from Pennsylvania School Breakfast Mini Grant Schools. This webinar is being presented by Project PA, a collaboration between the Pennsylvania Department of Education, Division of Food and Nutrition, and Penn State University. I'm Elaine McDonald, Director of Project PA, and I'll be moderating the webinar. We will be taking questions following today's presentations. You can type your questions into the chat box at any time and we'll collect them until the end of all of the presentations. Uh, if your chat box isn't open, you might need to hover your mouse along the bottom of the screen to see the option to open your chat box. We are recording today's webinar and we'll be posting the audio from the webinar on the Project PA website. In case you missed this message um, that was on the screen earlier, to download the slides from today's webinar, you can go to um, the website on your screen. There are two PDF files in this folder to download. One are the slides for today's webinar and the other is the continuing education certificate. Click on each file separately to download. The download link is in the upper right hand of the web page. Uh, you might see a box, uh, sign that says sign into box. You can just disregard that and click on the X to close the window and the file will be downloaded to the downloads folder on your computer. And those instructions are also in the chat box. So we have um, five presenters for today's webinar. We're gonna begin with Jennifer Jarrett, School Nutrition Education and Programs Manager for the Pennsylvania Department of Education, Division of Food and Nutrition. And then following Jen, we have individuals from four Pennsylvania schools that received school breakfast mini grant schools. And they'll tell us about the projects that they implemented and the results. Uh, we have Melissa Harding, Coordinator of School Nutrition Services for the North Penn School District. Christy Mano, Administrative Assistant for the Clearfield Christian Academy. Lori Mago, Food Service Director at Ferndale Area School District. And Patrick McGovern, Assistant Operations Manager and NSLP Coordinator for Community Academy of Philadelphia. And I'm just gonna turn it over to Jen for some brief words before we begin the other presentations. Thanks, Elaine. And thank you all for joining us. So as mentioned, this webinar is focused on Pennsylvania schools who have been able to implement and have had success with alternative breakfast models. Through the funding allocated by the Wolf Administration to the school breakfast program, we've been able to award 383 schools a total of approximately $1.5 million in the form of mini grants for use in creating or expanding alternative breakfast service models in the 2018-2019 and the upcoming 2019-2020 school years. 151 of those schools will receive their mini grant funding to utilize for the 2019-2020 school year. So we're hoping some of the awardees are on this call and can benefit from the stories of our 18-19 grantees. Um, so what will the schools be doing with this mini grant award money and what have they done in the past? Um, many, many schools have opted for a grab and, grow, grab and go to the, um, to the classroom breakfast model. Uh, we've also seen a rise in the number of schools that are implementing a second chance or a breakfast after the bell program. Um, and with these models in mind, some of the most common purchases that we see in the grant applications are hot and cold holding equipment, mobile kiosks, mobile point of sales tablets, and blenders for smoothie bars. Some schools have requested funding for vending machines that hold reimbursable meals and hook up to the school's point of service system. We've seen a rise in those requests in our 2019-2020 um, breakfast applications. So we're definitely excited to see how those will pan out. Um, through our initial data collection, we've seen an increase in breakfast participation in the schools who have implemented their alternative breakfast models. And you'll hear from some of those schools today. And with that, I'm gonna turn the presentation back over to Elaine, who will introduce our first presenter. Thanks, Jen. Okay, I'm going to give control to Melissa Harding, if you just bear with us for a few minutes. Okay, Melissa, you should have control of the screen now. You might need to click on the slide first. Yep, I think I have it now. Okay, great. Good morning, everybody. Um, I am Melissa Harding. I am the coordinator for School Nutrition Services at North Penn School District. Um, a little bit about our district. We are in Lansdale, Pennsylvania, which is Montgomery County. 
outside of Philadelphia. Our enrollment is about 14,000 students. We have 20 sites and serve K through 12. Um, we have 32% free and reduced district-wide, and we offer a lot of programs here at North Penn because we are such a large district. We have the breakfast program, national school lunch. We do after-school snack. We have a very large summer food service program. We have Head Start and also child and adult food care program within our district. The two um, sites that we selected for this grant was our North Penn High School, which is about 3,100 students, grades 10 through 12. That is also 32% free and reduced, and our lunch participation for our high school as a whole is 38%. And then Pendale Middle School was another school that we selected for our grant, and that has about 30, 1,300 students, grades 7 through 9. 40% free and reduced, so it's a little bit higher than our district average, and our lunch participation is 44%. So breakfast prior to our grant, we had traditional cafeteria service. So the students had the option to go to the cafeteria when they got to school. They selected from a variety of options and then eat either in the cafeteria or they could take it with them to class. Um, prior to the grant, our high school participation at breakfast was 11%, which equaled about 260 to 300 breakfasts per day. And then at the middle school, our participation for breakfast was 10%, which um, equated to 130 to 150 breakfasts per day. So we decided to apply for the breakfast grant to implement school breakfast cards in those two selected schools. We received two grants for $5,000 each, one per school, and we used that grant money to purchase a mobile breakfast cart at each school. Um, the reason why we chose a breakfast cart as an alternative source for our breakfast was there was a couple different reasons. First, we really found that students weren't coming to the cafeteria once they got to school and they didn't have time. Um, our high school is very large. It's very similar to like a college campus, if you can imagine, uh, with 3,100 kids for three grades. Um, so if your like homeroom was on one side of the school when the cafeteria is on the other side, that could be a 20 minute walk for a student. So it really, once we kind of like walked in the student's shoes, it didn't make sense for them to go down to the cafeteria all the time. And then also another piece that we found was students didn't even know we had breakfast sometimes. We would do our own marketing and um, it would be on the announcements that we offered breakfast, but it still wasn't clicking to the kids that they could come down to the cafeteria, at least in these two schools primarily, um, that they could come down and anybody could come, even if you weren't free and reduced. And that was definitely a barrier that um, we knew was there. So the breakfast cart features that we liked most and why we implemented it is we located the breakfast carts at the front of the school where the students were coming in, either from the buses or from where they were parking, and it was right in their face as soon as they walked in. And then we also opened a little bit earlier than our regular cafeteria um, for students and staff who came in early. And that was a big difference for our staff because if we started um, in the cafeteria around 7 o'clock, we would start the breakfast cart around 6.45, and we would have coffee at the breakfast cart, and it really made a difference to the staff, actually, so teachers coming in early, um, they would stop at the cart as well. We had offered the same variety of options as the cafeteria, um, so that there still was the option for the students to go to the cafeteria as well. They didn't have to seek out the breakfast car necessarily just for something specific or go down to the cafeteria if they wanted a breakfast sandwich. We offered both at both sites. And then we also added a barcode scanner at the checkout for the breakfast cart um, to help with the flow of the lines, to cut down the line time. Um, all of our students and staff have ID cards with barcode scanners on them. So we linked them up with our point of sale and students didn't have to type in their PIN number anymore. They could, if they had their ID, um, just scan and um, be on their way. So our timeline of events 
first with the grant application, we discussed the idea of the new breakfast cards with key stakeholders. So we reached out to the principals, we talked to facility, we talked to our business office, and we really generated ideas with our school nutrition staff to submit that application. Our principals, I have to say, were extremely supportive of this initiative. They have, they, they knew the benefits of, our, of their students eating breakfast that were out there and they wanted us to do whatever we wanted basically to implement this new um, program. Um, once the grant was awarded to us, we actually worked with the American Dairy Association Northeast to find the breakfast carts to best fit our program. Um, that was really an initiative that I took on to reach out to them because I knew in the past they've had um, grants before that they've offered breakfast carts and um, I just used them kind of as a resource to find a really high quality breakfast cart that wasn't going to be flimsy or break after a few years and I just knew it would be really high quality with whatever they um, um, recommended to us. And then I worked with my staff at each of the schools to figure out what cart was best going to fit their school. And we actually um, ended up buying two different carts, one for the high school and one for the middle school to um, fit their needs. Our high school needed a bigger cart because there was a lot more volume. And our middle school, it had to fit into an elevator. So we had to make sure it was the right specs to fit into the elevator. Um, from there, once everything was ordered, we planned with our nutrition staff at each school to create a menu um, if we were going to make any enhancements to the breakfast program, but we also wanted to have additional grab-and-go offerings like granola bars, um, breakfast bars, parfaits, and then even non-traditional items. We serve soft pretzels on the carts in the morning, and those are really popular. And it's kind of like non-traditional. You wouldn't really think of that for breakfast necessarily, but it is really popular. And then uh, we worked with our school administration to market the new cart. So we didn't, it didn't just come out of food service that we were marketing this new breakfast cart. It was coming from our administration. It was coming from our teachers. Everyone was kind of involved in the planning and promotion of the um, new cart. And then we actually implemented in November of 2018. Again, we continued our marketing um, on the morning announcements, flyers, posters, TV screens, school-wide, um, and we really made it like a event that this date was, was the grand opening. Um, in May also, May 2019, we also promoted again the breakfast cart and we offered free breakfast at our high school. Um, during the Keystone exams because one, we wanted to promote breakfast and how it'll help with your learning and testing um, and then just again to promote the breakfast card again. Um, so the ultimate results that we had, our participation at the high school increased to 15% and that was about, that turns out to be about 200 more breakfasts per day. And then an interesting unexpected outcome is we also added about 80 more staff participation per day. And that was between offering coffee, parfaits, water, smoothies. So that was really great to see a lot more teachers coming to our breakfast cart and to um, be purchasing from the nutrition department. And then at Pendale, we increased to 13%, which increased about 50 to 75 more breakfasts per day. And it was really interesting, more of the outcomes through Pendale, the principal had reported that they noticed um, more improved attentiveness reported by the teachers, an increase in healthy eating, a decrease in stomach aches and um, headaches reported by the school nurse, and a decrease in stigma around school breakfast. So overall, we had a really great outcome in my mind of starting this for the first year. Um, the hurdles that we still face um, that we are working on addressing is really getting the word of, out um, and getting students to eat breakfast. We did have a survey at our high school to um, see what the students wanted to see on the breakfast cart and even at lunch. 
Um, but we also had a question on, do you eat breakfast? Where do you eat breakfast? Do you eat it at home? Do you eat it on your way to school? And we found out that 27% of our um, high school students just don't, reported they don't eat breakfast at all. So reaching out to those students and really getting the word out about the importance of breakfast and if they're eating it at home, that's, that's fine. But if they're not eating at all, those are the students that we really want to focus on and make sure that they are starting their day off right. And then the other hurdle that we're, we face is students knowing that the breakfast cart is for everybody, but also our free and reduced students, that that meal on the breakfast cart is still free. It is still reduced for them as well. Um, and that was really hard for us to, like, we, we didn't really want to market that. Um, but it's something that we are still working on the details of on trying to get that word out. And then sometimes even just the students knowing at all if they are free or reduced. And if their parents aren't telling them that they're free or reduced, they might be coming through the lunch line and just thinking that they're getting lunch, but they might not think that they should get breakfast. Um, so that's another challenge as well that um, we're gonna be working on for next year. Our keys to success, um, I really have to attest to our supportive staff and our administration. Um, my staff have been excellent in these changes. They really embraced it. Um, we didn't add too much time to any of our staff um, besides the, the employees who were working the cart in the morning. That changed a little bit. But other than that, it was really just prepping more, and everybody was really on board. Um, this picture on the screen is Pete. He is our principal at our high school. He really did a great job helping us promote it, and anything we wanted to do, he helped make it happen. And then Carol Begley on the right-hand side, that is our current area supervisor, but she was uh, the team leader at the time at the high school, and she was actually nominated um, as a school breakfast hero through No Kid Hungry campaign because of her initiatives with this breakfast cart. So it's really brought our team together a lot more, um, but without that supportive staff and the support of our administration, none of this would be as successful as it really is. Um, and then the other piece to success is offering what the students want and getting the students feedback. Um, it really helped us a lot bring to light um, information when we sent out that survey to our high school students to know who's eating breakfast, where they're eating breakfast, and then what they want to see on the breakfast cart. Because maybe they are eating at home or eating on their way in, but if they know that we're offering something that they want, maybe they'll change it up and come in and have breakfast with us. Um, in regards to our future plans, um, when it came to the grant, our goal was to increase our participation by 20%. And at the high school, going from 11% to 15%, that was a 67% increase in our breakfast. And then at Pendale, going from 10 to 13%, that was exactly 20% increase. Um, so we met the goals and exceeded the goals for the grant that we wanted to. Um, but our long-term goal um, for our department is to reach 20% participation total. So we still have a little bit more work to do um, to reach that ultimate goal. Um, next year, we're going to, going to continue and expand upon our free breakfast during the testing because it was really successful. It brought more teachers in, it brought more students in, and we're hoping that will um, drum up more business for the breakfast cards um, all year round. And then our we're having a breakfast promotion event at Pendale in September. This is through Fuel Up to Play 60. There's going to, it's going to be a big event. We're going to offer free breakfast that day, uh, like yogurt parfaits and different fruits and things like that. Um, but then we're also going to have a presentation um, with an NFL player to come and speak on the importance of breakfast. And I'm really excited. I think it's going to be a really nice event um, to really promote breakfast as a whole and then also our program. And then also we're looking into breakfast after the bell with our breakfast cart at Pendale next year. Um, they have something called pen time 
and it's a built-in study hall around nine o'clock in the morning and it's every day at our middle school and we thought that that might be a really great opportunity to open the card up again for any students who might not want to eat at seven in the morning when they come in and giving them that second chance of being open at nine o'clock maybe they'll be more hungry for breakfast then and then at our high school, we're looking at additional plans for our breakfast cart use. We had, um, again, in that survey that we sent to students, a lot of interest for an after-school cart to offer snacks or a, a light meal before they go to practice, before they go to any of their sporting events or clubs or anything like that. So we might take that opportunity to also um, we're here to feed the kids, so any way that I can feed them when they're hungry, we're going to take that opportunity. And that's all I have for North Penn. Okay, thanks, Melissa. That was great. Uh, again, I want to remind our attendees, if you have any questions, you can use the chat box. And we are going to turn control over to Christy Mano from Clearfield Christian Academy. Okay, Christy, you should have control of the screen. Good morning, uh, my name is Christy Mano and I'm the Administrative Assistant at the Clearfield Alliance Christian School. Um, just a little bit of information about our school. Uh, we are a private Christian school and we serve grades K through 12. We have 101 students. Um, right now we have about 63% that are qualified for free and reduced and we do participate in the um, CEP program. Um, as far as our staffing goes, we have a food service director and also two part-time nutrition staff members. Um, so um, this was our very first year. I'm having trouble moving the slide here. And there we go. Um, this was our first year that we served breakfast. Um, we just started participa participating in CEP and needed to move to that. And so we actually implemented three different service models. Um, for our kindergarten class, we did the traditional cafeteria service, and that was before the bell. Um, for our grades one through six, we did breakfast in the classroom after the bell. And for grades seven through 12, we did a grab and go. Um, with our mini grant purchase, uh, we were able to purchase carts that were able to deliver the food to the classrooms, rolling coolers so that we could take milk to the classrooms and reusable ice insulated bags so we could deliver hot food items to the classrooms, large garbage cans because the classroom garbages were just not big enough once we got into all that food waste. Um, and then we also purchased a service cart for our grab and go station for our older kiddos. Um, some of our challenges and concerns were uh, we're a very small school with a very small staff. Our food service director is also the main cook. She does all of the ordering, all of the cooking, all the cleaning. Um, she's kind of a one-woman show. And we do have two, two part-time staff that come in and help, but they are literally there to serve and clean up. Um, and just not a lot of budget there. So there definitely was a concern about um, would we be able to even financially make this happen? Um, and then also just with our limited staff hours, would we be able to um, actually staff a breakfast and make it, make it run? Um, so one of the things that we did with our breakfast foods were all of our breakfast foods were individually packaged. Um, you'll see how we did that later on here. Um, we did serve hot food once a week, but even that was individually packaged. So it really cut down what we needed as far as staff to implement this. Um, and very exciting, we were successful. Um, we served 13,973 reimbursable breakfasts this year. And then I broke that down also according to the breakfast service models. And so 83, on average, 83% of our kindergartners were eating breakfast with our traditional cafeteria service. 87% of our first through sixth graders were eating breakfast in the classroom. And then 60% of our seventh through 12th graders were eating, um, were grabbing breakfast on their way. Um, so the reason we kind of chose to do it the way we did is um, our kindergartners, we serve them in the cafeteria before the bell. 
our um, school starts at 8 a.m., but our kindergarten class doesn't start until 8.45. And so that gave us 45 minutes that the cafeteria was available. Um, nobody else was in there. And so we were able to um, bring our kindergartners in and serve them down there. Um, there was definitely a concern about mess in the classroom uh, for that age, and so we were able to do it down there. Um, for our grades first through sixth, we did it after the bell. Um, you can see a picture of just our kind of little breakfast carts there that we would, our staff, we increased our staff hours, our part-time service staff came in um, about an hour and a half a day in the mornings from 7.30 till 9, and they would help serve the breakfast. Um, but then they'd get things ready for the next day. So they would count out what we would need per classroom and get those carts stocked the day before with anything that was shelf stable they could do. And then the morning of service, they would come in and add whatever refrigerated items needed to be added to the cart um, and also milk. Um, our kids were very excited to be helpful transporting those carts and the coolers down to their classrooms. Um, all of our students, if they get there before the bell, they are in the cafeteria um, and until the teachers come and get them and take them to the classroom. So um, students were very happy to help out taking those carts and those coolers down to the classrooms. Um, we also had some seventh and eighth graders that would actually go into the first and second grade classroom and just help those kids get um, packages open, make sure they had their straws, make sure they had their napkins, so that the teachers could continue to, to teach and start their day and not have to be opening up 25 milks or whatever that looks like. Um, our teachers were very supportive of this. They were, um, during this time while they were serving breakfast, they were taking attendance. You can see all the way on the right of your screen, there's school workout on the desk, little girls drinking her milk. So that was just kind of part of what they did. They had their breakfast in the morning and, and they started their day. Um, I'm having trouble advancing my slide here. Oh, there we go. Um, so then for the grade 7 through 12, because their schedule looks a little bit different, we did the grab-and-go cart before the bell. And again, the staff counted those items that they could and stocked that cart. Um, and it was a little bit larger cart. I don't have a picture of it, but a larger cart that had their items in it. Um, and then again, whatever needed to be taken care of that morning, they did. Um, and then the students just grabbed breakfast on the way to their first class. And another thing that we um, found that was helpful for us was just on field trip days on how to do breakfast. And we would kind of fill our grab and go station and on the way out to the bus, we'd hand the kids a brown paper bag. And as we served them, they would put their items in the brown paper bag and go on out to the bus. And so that was something that was just one of those challenges. We weren't sure how that was gonna work, but it, it really went well and it was very quick to make that happen. Um, and then for us looking forward, it, we were very excited with how it went this year, just not really having any idea what it was going to be like. And we felt that it was, it was very successful. We were able to manage things financially. And um, so for, as far as our traditional cafeteria service and a breakfast in the classroom, we don't Ten, intend on changing any of that. Um, we will continue going forward. The kids really enjoyed it. Um, the parents really appreciated it. Um, that they had, they knew that when they would go, they would have breakfast. Um, we, for the most part, got a pretty good two-week rotating menu going. They had cereal every Monday and Friday, and then, like I said, we did hot breakfast once a week for them. Um, and for us to, part of the reason I think it was so successful is it didn't require any schedule changes. They didn't have to get there any earlier to get their breakfast. And of course it was, um, it was free breakfast, so we didn't have a lot turn away on that. Um, our grab and go participation was a little bit lower than um, the younger kids. And um, I know previously the, just a conversation about a survey and we've, we've looked at that too to just find out are our kids just not eating breakfast or is it too early in the morning or are they literally sliding in before the bell and they don't have time to grab something. So that's something that we will look at um, coming up for next year as to how to really increase that for those older kids. Um, is it that they're not enjoying the food choices or, you know, what it is. So we definitely look at maybe doing a survey or even just a pre-packed option that 
instead of kind of waiting in line and trying to figure out exactly what they want, they would just be able to pick up pick up a bag and go, and hopefully that would increase that um, participation. So that has been our experience for this last year. Thanks, Christy. That was great. I see that we do have a question about uh, the slides being available to print. They are available. There's a website that is in the chat box. I think that should still be visible for everybody to use to um, download the slides. We'll take a look at that as we move on to the next presentation. And I am Hi. going to turn it over to Lori. Um, okay. Lori, I believe you shouldn't have control of the screen now. I do, you said? I should? Okay. Hi, I'm Lori Mago. I'm the Food Service Director at Ferndale Area School District. I'm, um, we're located in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Um, we have two separate schools. We have a high school and an elementary. The elementary is K-4 through 6, and the high school is, junior, senior high school, is 7 through 12. Um, our total enrollment is 300, I mean, 626 with the um, high school being 259 or um, reduced let me change this sorry or reduced I can't mine's not working to change the chance to change the page but our reduced um, rate is 64 percent the previous breakfast program that we used was the traditional um, breakfast when the students would arrive on the bus or we have a lot of walkers that walk to our school district and um, there was just not enough time for them to eat. Our breakfast originally was between 7 a.m. and 7.30, um, which left no time for the students to eat before homeroom. Our participation level um, was very low. There was only like 30 kids daily that would eat or it was like 11% of students that would eat daily. So um, we put in for the breakfast grant and opted for a grab and go. We did a survey, we sent a survey out last school year on if we did a grab and go breakfast, how many, you know, would you participate? And we got a high response of like 80% of kids would be interested in why they didn't come the prior year was because there was no time for them to eat and then make it back to homeroom. So what we implemented was we um, they would come to school. The 30 kids that ate the traditional breakfast still to this day eat the traditional breakfast. The other kids, our, our count went from 30 to roughly 140 kids daily. So they will go to their homeroom. They will sign out. And that's their our homeroom is a half hour period, and that's when they go to clubs or do makeup work or um, whatever they have anything to do that day. And if they're not going to their club or anywhere, they will just get their grab and go breakfast, and they'll stay in the classroom. So that I mean, in the cafeteria, so we don't have kids going back and forth, going they're being monitored. But if if not, they just um, if they're going to a club, they grab their grab and go breakfast and head to where they're heading and eat it there. Um, we were very successful with our principals and our um, teachers were well on board with um, letting the students at this, you know, time frame to eat. And mainly, we just um, worked around students and club senate um, schedules. And we, during National Breakfast Week, had incentive days, which we did a lucky tray day. So every day, the kids would come in, which boosted our morning one also. Um, if they got the lucky tray, then they won a gift card. And we also had that week of National Breakfast Week, the senator came in and um, promoted National Breakfast Week and, you know, how important it is. You know, we had flyers and everybody signed a big billboard, a big sign for them to take back to their office. And it was kind of cool that um, they picked our school to come to. So we went from 
like I said, 30 kids to eating breakfast to roughly 140 of kids that um, eat breakfast every day. So it went from 11% to 54%. Let me see. And our keys. Sorry, my thing's not working. We probably um, will not moving forward. We will. We're going to keep our grab and go because it's it's working for us during the homeroom and club periods and. Um, I'm hoping next year it will go up because we're we're now we are going to be a CEP school for the 1920 school year. So that's about it. That's how we did it. Thanks, Laurie. Again, um, if anyone has questions, you can use the chat box. We now have the link posted again for the slides in the chat box. And I will turn it over to Patrick McGovern. All right, good morning. Pat McGovern, I'm the uh, National School Lunch Program Coordinator and Assistant Man uh, Operations Manager at Community Academy. Patrick? Yeah, they're actually not advancing. Oh, okay. I'll, should I advance them for you? Uh, or yeah, it doesn't look like I'm, it's going anywhere. Or you could try clicking on your slide and then maybe use your arrow key. Okay, there you go. There. All right, we are a kindergarten through 12th grade charter school with an enrollment of 1,225 students located in a lower income area of Philadelphia. We are a CEP school. Uh, what we originally did before the breakfast grant was breakfast in the cafeteria, but we, uh, with a percentage participation of 20%, uh, some of the issues that we had were we only had 20% of the students coming in and eating breakfast every morning. A lot of that was due to the staggered arrivals of students, late arrivals to breakfast, late arriving students. We also have a lot of public transportation students, uh, students that are bused in, parents drop off, walk-ins, so a little combination of everything. Um, really didn't have any issue with buy-in from the principals, the food service management company, vice principal, the deputy CEO. Um, some of my concerns were the, the training end of it. Uh, we ended up going with breakfast in the classroom and grab and go. Uh, just ensuring that we did the civil rights training, make sure that all the teachers and staff are giving out the approved breakfast, make sure that all the components are included. Um, we saw an increase mainly from the breakfast in the classroom, but a little bit from grab and go up to the 70 or 80% range as far as participation. Uh, one of the things that we did, and actually I have it on the next slide, is we do breakfast in the classroom with insulated bags. Uh, and I put the rosters in there uh, for, for the accounting purposes. Because that was one of my concerns is, is getting making, making sure that all those are accounted for. Uh, with that being said, I also work with student services, make sure the power school and our POS system, which we use as lunchtime, uh, were linked together. Uh, some of my concerns were food allergies, uh, or allergies to milk, soy, wheat, all that kind of stuff. Um, each of the food service management company employees that, that prep the bags each day were also given those lists to make sure that we made those accommodations for those students. Uh, the food service management company dropped off the bags, picked them up. They also collected the trash and prepped the, bag, prepped the trash cans for the next day. That way the, the food wasn't sitting in the classroom all day. Uh, we used a rotating breakfast menu, uh, mostly prepackaged stuff, uh, along with the milk and the fruit. Um, we have two separate cafeterias or two prep areas that the Food management service uh, company prep the bags, and we actually have them labeled per room along with the rosters in there. Uh, as far as the, the grab and go, we had two grab and go units that, uh, that we purchased along with the scanners and several carts. 
so we can get those the uh, the late students. Uh, we dropped off the bags at 7.30 every morning at each homeroom and picked them up at 8.30, so you had the, the opportunity to catch all those students from 7.30 to 8.30, um, and then additional students through the grab and go option. Uh, we used our grant, mini grant, to purchase uh, cooler bags, additional trash cans, so it's separated out at the end of the day where they, or I'm sorry, at the, after breakfast is done, they would put it out in the hallway as part of collecting the bags and the trash. They would re, re, put new bags in each trash can to prep it for the next day. Uh, we also purchased some utility carts and bags uh, for transport along with those laptops. Uh, and then worked out the storage and replenishment of the bags with the food service management company. Once those bags came back into the cafeteria, they would prep prep them for the next day with what they could. The following morning, they would put the milk and all the other components that needed to be put in there as well. Um, one of the things that we were, were working on currently is uh, through our food advisory committee, uh, we'll make some adjustments. Uh, we had students, staff, and parent recommendations come through as far as things they would like to see, things that they don't like in the breakfast, uh, to hopefully increase our, our participation as well. Um, one of the things that worked with the food, uh, food service management company was that the parents and students can see what is being offered for each month through a, um, a menu app on their smartphones. Um, basically, constant follow-up to make sure that the program is running, running well. Um, I, update it, I update the rosters weekly, uh, as well as any of the allergy information to make sure that we, uh, we were current with all that, make sure we didn't have any issues. Uh, we do plan on doing the grab-and-go and the breakfast in the classroom. Uh, but this year, going forward, I want to try and concentrate on doing the uh, improving the grab and go numbers so we can get as many late students as we can. But um, yeah, very, not a whole lot of uh, pushback from any of the students, staff, uh, or administration. Um, and I think that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, let's just move forward to questions. It looks like we do have some questions for our presenters. Uh, first for Melissa, how do you keep soft, soft pretzels hot on the cart? Do you offer any other hot items? So we actually get our soft pretzels from um, Philly Soft Pretzel Factory. So we don't need to keep them warm. They're just the way they are. But we do have um, at our Pendale um, middle school, our cart that we purchased actually has hot wells in it. Um, so we do have that option. We also get um, those delivery pizza bags that are insulated and we keep our breakfast sandwiches in those. And just because like we roll them out at 645 and by 715, 720, um, the bells ring. So it's not staying out that long. So in those insulated bags, really helps and keeps everything warm. Okay, thanks. Uh, then we have a question about point of sale systems when using a grab and go system. How are point of sale systems used with mobile carts and delivery to classrooms? How did students pay for grab and go? Was a cash, cash register used and a point of sale system? Anyone can take that question? For North Penn, we purchased a laptop. Our point of sale, we use Primero Edge. It's all web-based, so it was really easy for us to just put the laptop on the cart with the barcode scanner and pin pad. We do have a cash register out there um, to collect money still, but we really encourage on the cart for you to already have money on the account, but we have the ability to still collect cash. Would anyone else like to address their point of sale system with grab and go? Um, us at Ferndale, our grab and go, we um, we set up all our bags at the beginning of the lunch line, so nothing is out of the cafeteria. 
they just come through and we use our original point of sale, the cash register at the end of the line, and then as you know, the students go where they're going. So we don't have carts or, I mean, our school is not very big either, but that's how we do it. Anyone else? Okay, thanks. We have a question about which items were popular and not popular for grab and go in high school. Um, for North Penn, our popular items really were are, are the soft pretzels, the smoothies we have, and the yogurt parfaits, and obviously like the breakfast sandwiches. Um, least popular, um, I'm not really sure. I guess like the granola bars, the, those kind of things aren't very, very popular, but we have students who do purchase them every day. They're just not a number one seller for us, but we have them on the cart because of a more grab and go setting. Anyone else want to discuss popular or not popular items, even I think even outside of the high school level? At the Clearfield Alliance School, um, our kids love sweets, <laughs> um, and so we do a lot of whole grain, but whole grain um, cinnamon rolls, muffin tops, um, those kind of items. They usually that was usually our biggest biggest day when they had those items. Some of the breakfast bars and bag of fulls, the like the toaster strudel type uh, prepackaged stuff is what uh, is what they liked at, at our school. Okay, thanks. Pat, we have a question for you. You mentioned alternatives for students with food allergies. Are students pre-ordering their meals for the next day or are these accommodations in the bags just in case? Yeah, these are accommodations in the bags. Um, any of those students that had submitted the, the, the forms where they may have a soy allergy, milk allergy, egg, wheat, we, are, we, uh, we give them an alternative meal to accommodate their allergies. Okay, Melissa, there seems to be some interest in the soft pretzels that you mentioned. <laughs> Which size Philly pretzel factory pretzel do you purchase and are they nutrition compliant? Also, do you get them the night before or does the local store make them in the morning for you? Do you pick them up or do they deliver? And what size is the soft pretzel? So our pretzels are 4.5 ounce. We have bid sex for them. They are non-whole grain. Um, we did have a waiver and now obviously we don't need a waiver anymore for them. Um, it is one of the more popular items that we have. So we have selected that to stay the way it is and not make it whole grain. But because we offer it as a breakfast grain, um, it doesn't have to necessarily fit into the smart snack like 200 calorie um, regulation, but it still has to fit with our regular um, parameters and we make sure in our bid specs that it has the right amount of sodium and um, calories and fat and everything like that. Um, we get them delivered to us daily and they are fresh baked in the morning before they are delivered to us. I think that answers those questions. Okay. And how many people man the breakfast cart at North Penn School District? Um, at our high school, because it is a larger population, we have two people on the breakfast cart. And then at our middle school, we have one person on the breakfast cart. Okay, a question for Clearfield, Christian, and Christy. Um, are you doing grab and go and classroom breakfast? Yes, we do both models and serve in the cafeteria as well. Um, because we're a small school, uh, we without we're able to manage all of those different service models by only adding the one additional person. Um, and I know even the there was a question on um, payment with that. Again, since we are such a small school, we still um, we still do paper and pen. And so on, when we send our carts out to the classrooms. There's literally a class roster and in there it, the teachers have done their civil rights training and they are checking off whether the student, what the students are taking, if it's reimbursable, etc. Great. 
Uh, how much labor increased with the grab and go carts? Because I s assume you need someone else to be cashier. Does that go to me? Anyone who's using <laughs> um, a grab and go cart. Um, like I said, we're a small school, so we we do have one person that's working um, an hour and a half each morning, and because of the different timing of things, that's before for the bell, that person's able to man that cart after they've already prepped the other carts before that they're serving the kindergarten breakfast. So for us, we only had to add one person and they're able to manage all of that. Anyone else want to address the labor? So for North Penn, um, we, we have 30 employees at our high school just because of the volumes that we do. Um, so it was really about rearranging some of our staff and having more um, one of our staff members particularly change to a morning shift um, to come in early to make the coffee and prep the certain stuff for the breakfast cart. But we actually pulled one of our cashiers who we already had um, on for breakfast because we have four lines open for breakfast in the cafeteria at our high school. So we put down one of those lines to three lines and then moved that cashier to the breakfast cart instead. So it was really kind of rearranging some of our staff time and what they were doing instead of adding a lot more time. Okay, do any of you know of a curriculum being used with the breakfast program for incorporating life skills students? We don't have a particular curriculum that our teachers have shared with us at North Penn, but we have life skills students who um, have taken over some of our coffee program in the afternoon and they actually deliver coffee to teachers in our high school. Um, that was the teachers coming to us from life skills classes to want to do that. So we weren't really a part of that, except for we're giving them our leftover coffee from, um, from lunch and they're basically delivering it, taking the money from the teacher or yeah, from the teachers and then bringing it back to food service. Okay, and I think this one would be for Jen. For the 2018-19 breakfast mini grant recipients, is there a standard report or template to be utilized for the end of year report? Uh, yeah, the answer is yes. Um, emails were sent out to all recipients um, um, over the past couple of weeks. I probably sent out four. Um, so there is a link uh, to a SurveyMonkey report that needs to be filled in for all recipients. So if you are a grantee and you do not have that link, um, please send me an email today at jejarrett. J A R R E T T at PA.gov, and I will forward you the email. Okay, I don't see any other questions appearing in the chat box. I see that maybe a couple of people might have had problems downloading the slides. I'm going to put my email address in the chat box, and if you weren't able to get the slides or the certificates, if you email me, I will make sure that you get those. Um, I want to Thanks our, thank our presenters today for some wonderful presentations. It's great to hear of the success that you all had implementing your breakfast programs and not only your increases in participation, but the positive outcomes for your students and your school districts and your school food service programs. So thank you very much and have a happy end to your school year. You, you too.